Okay, so we're gonna try to, uh, if you watched the previous video, you probably saw the old helmets that I got. Uh, the new old stock, like 70s, 80s, Harley AMF three quarter helmets. Um, pretty cool looking, but the innards are toast. So I popped this guy out. It just kind of slides out. You gotta kind of work it out of there. But as you can see, the, the liner that kind of went around this is all, yeah, roached. So I'm gonna attempt to replace that. There are people out there that will restore vintage helmet liners. I think it's a couple hundred bucks, and I probably should have went that route, but I'm impatient. So I'm gonna see if I can do it myself. Uh, you see the ear cover cheek pads or whatever you call it. Uh, the foam is still good in these, but the, the covering has come off. So we're gonna like rewrap those. These I'm gonna leave on because they're riveted. Uh, to the, the actual shell and I don't want to take the rivets out so I guess I'm gonna kind of rubber cement or something this deal into here uh, after it's all done this pad I got some more padding so that that can be wrapped to um, just at like Johan Fabrics or Michaels or Hobby Lobby something like that um, but yeah we're gonna try to rewrap these in a different material Hang on a second, let me grab the material and we're going to be wrapping it in. Yeah, dude. Of course. So we're going to go black on the liner, probably on the cheek pads. This guy, got to be a little purple. Crushed velvet action. That one's got fur all over it. But yeah, that should look cool sitting right in the middle. So we'll check back here in a minute and see how far we could get. take this off of here kind of glue it on but if we can get this off decently we can kind of make a template I'm thinking I've never done this before so I don't know but we'll find out yeah maybe not too good oh we got a little action there Dude, it looks like this cloth piece is glued in the back and then it went over it so I'll try to do the same thing just try not to break this up. Let me pull it out, and we can use that for kind of a pattern. Same thing with this guy, which there's only so much you can do with this old foam. It's literally like turning it to dust. Super safe. It's gonna be super safe. I mean, it says dot on the back. Asbestos in this, dude. Okay, a big chunk. This is probably not the professional way of doing this, but we have kind of a piece. We gotta get all. Muck us out of there. Okay, just a little guy. Put that up there too. And I guess we'll just kind of do that and get the rest of the goodies out of there. Getting a little closer. Might have to let it sit for a minute. So we'll rub some on there and we'll let it sit, see what it says. I'm gonna go with no. Just made it kind of slimy. Okay, back to what we were doing. when your hands are like 
sandpapered anyway. Calluses really help to cut the wooden residue. I think. I think it's like 15 bucks a yard. They'll let you buy it in a half yard. So this whole thing was like six, seven bucks. So my idea is I'll put this on here and then I'm not sure if I'm going to use this as a template or this as a template. If it makes sense to me, I should use this because this is like all stretched out and weird. And I think that's how wide it should be. So even though it's like a little squirrely here, that's because it got taken off on the helmet. So it should be like this. And then that part should get longer. And if I cut it too big, then I can go back and just cut some off. So I think I'm gonna go off that one. I'm thinking that should go like that. I mean, I haven't pulled it out at all. If I make it even a little bit bigger, it should be okay. I could trim it. So I'm going to like test fit it before I wrap it with the other stuff. So this was a little bit bigger than this. So we're just going to go super big and I'll just trim it off. Some of that stuck to the inside of the thing when we took it apart. So then we come back over here. some scissors. So my favorite to use is the Pillory Doughboy bone cutting freaking kitchen shears because that's how we roll. So she cuts the material. I'm like, do you know where I could find this? Like, is this in a different apartment? Is it on a roll somewhere? She was like, I don't know. I'm like, well, I need to, like, something like this to replace this. It's a true story. So this ch <laughs> chick takes me over to this other aisle. She has this little package with two little things in it. What is this? They're fucking things. They're, uh, boob pads. And it looked okay, except for it had a seam down the middle and real pointy things on the end of it. So if you were to put it on there, you'd look like an idiot. But she tried. They were like eight bucks. I didn't get them. I was going to get them just because she showed them to me, and I thought that was hilarious. Back of our sweet helmet, no? How does this go? This is the back. Maybe you should write a big B on it with the marker. Yes. Definitely. This is the back. Back. Okay. So, this, how the hell did that go? It wrapped around the whole thing. Would it have been like that? So this one together in the back. Perfect. So this goes together in the back. It's 
it's probably going to be too big all together because I just randomly cut it. But it can overlap. So we'll just put it up in there. Now, did that fold around the edge or would, no, it was just stuck on that edge, huh? Let's see. So we know it was like this. We know that was in the back. Right? Yes. Like this. So I think I got it figured out. Flat ends went together, it went around, but I mean it's a little big. But I'm thinking if I just glue it on there, I don't know what you can see in there. That ought to look pretty cool, huh? I'm gonna have to trim it obviously because it's too big. So let me just take a little bit off of these sides. Keep kind of trimming that till I get it to lay down properly. I don't want a big fat ridge in the back of my head either. So I'll just take a little bit off of there. Let's see what we got. Those together. So I think this went further in in the back. Would have been nice if it had a place where you could even mark it in there, but really can't. We got a little bit hanging over the edge. This is going to go down a little further. But as I glue it down, after I've wrapped it, that should make up work. I don't think it needs to be all the way over here because I mean, it's just going to rub against the helmet. I may put the fabric all the way over it. I don't know. We'll see here in a bit. square edge is in there, which would be this side. So I'm going to put, yeah, so I'm going to wrap that like that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to trace now this piece, which I'm just going to have to cut that one hella big, because it basically is going to go on here, and then I'll cut it after I've glued it on. But I'm going to glue this to this after I've cut it out. So that's going to be, I guess, the next step. The unfortunate part is I don't have a white or some kind of like colored something other than a paint pen in white and I think that might make a mess. So I'm thinking I've got it laid out. I don't really have a way to mark it which is fine. I'll just cut it appropriately and cut it a little extra big on that side. But I think I'm going to need some spray adhesive to glue that foam piece to this piece. Because the other glue I got is more of like a, I don't know, some kind of weird glue. It doesn't spray on, so I don't have a way to spread it on there evenly. And I don't want the outside to look all bumpy when it's glued to that foam. So I think I've got enough in this little piece that I cut off to make one of these sides. So 
we're going to work on that. The foam is still good. It's not all deteriorating like the other stuff. So I'm going to use these ones and the same thing with the top piece that we're going to wrap in a different color. But it's going to necessitate some spray foam too. So first we will lay that guy out. And this little fella here, we'll get it to lay out as flat as possible. So maybe that's better this way. Yeah. I see why they use pins and things like that to like really get accurate and hold the things down when they're making templates of whatever it is they're cutting. Uh, but, you know, here at the eyeball shack, that's what we're doing. We're eyeballing. That's why it's gonna come out looking like a So I pulled out the other side, and it looks like one side is in fact flopped over, and then looks like the sides go over. Whether it's the long side or the short side, I do not know. But it looks like it does go like this. Then they wrapped it over, and somehow this happened. Somehow. <laughs> so I guess once we have glue to actually hold it in place, it'll make more sense. I don't know. I think it may be all weird because I cut it a little bit. But the inside isn't fully covered, right? Not on that one, but you cut this one big, so... So I'm afraid... I don't know that it matters. But... The way that they had it is these extra little sides were actually glued on to the inside of those flaps. So we can't glue this all the way on, so we put it on there, I would guess. But I'm thinking in terms of folding this, it's probably better to take out this extra little thing. You can see they've, just, well that one's squished on both ends, but they made little corners out of it and just kind of wadded it up and glued it. There's no real perfection in there, so we're just going to wrap them and glue it, but we got to have the glue. So we'll have to go. So we're really going to go get the glue now? We're really going to go get the glue now. Got some 3M headliner adhesive. I don't know if it's the right stuff, but that's what they had at AutoZone. That's what we're going with. So I'm gonna shake it up, put a little cardboard down so I'm gonna get my table all nasty. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, this goes, let's test fit it again. That goes like that, that goes like that. Then the sides come in. And then that guy gets taped behind there, right? Let me think. So that side is the right side. We're going on the left side, which we're going to, yeah, I mean, we're just going to wrap the thing and see how it goes, man. That's all we can do. Let's get it to it. Well, it sprays out pretty. Pretty big, because it's for a car. I guess that's enough. Okay. We'll put this guy in the middle. What I don't want is hella glue all over my fabric. I feel like that's what's happening.
So we're going to take our old styrofoam bucket. Label put the B for the back. We know the sides meet at the back. So we'll test fit it real quick to see if that works. So we know this goes towards the back. to go down to about where the foam is kind of equal to the dealing. I think the way they had it <coughs> is like that and then they just wrapped it around and glued it. So I'm thinking we got to glue the inside part in and then fold the flaps over. Well no, I think we're just going to glue around the edge. And leave the inside because I'm pretty sure that's just was to hold it in place. So this should keep it from falling into the helmet, but we're gonna have to cut some relief slits in here so that I think so that it goes in right. I would imagine if over the ear area is where that would be. No, that can't be because that would be on the bottom. I don't know. Let's see. So if we pull this down and around, it's not really even the finish we're looking for, but I guess it's going to be up in the helmets and that's going to be hidden by our ear loops anyway, because that goes up in the, the bucket, so you won't even see that. So yeah, we'll do some cutting around the edge, Let's see if we can get it fit in there appropriately. tight and glue her down. That ought to look a little better. We may have jacked it off a little bit. Because in the back, this is supposed to be butted together, but it ain't. So, oh well, no, I guess it'll work. It'll work. Alright. I think for this one, I'm not going to use the, uh, the old spray adhesive. The thing's a little squirrely. So, I think we will uh, use some of this. So, we got some. Beacon Fabric Tack. It's like 10 bucks for this little thing. I don't know if it works, but it seems to be the good one. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It says that's what it's for, so we'll give it a go. Sorry, open too. That's cool. Okay, so I guess I'll start. I'm guessing at the front. I'll kind of put this in as far as possible without it punching. Well, it's good to me. Roll it. So I'm going to put some glue around this foam edge. See what I'm doing here. I don't know if that's a great idea, but that's what I'm doing. Put some glue around there so that it'll hold the foam. And we're going to put some like this so it'll hold the fabric. Let's see how that goes. Start working it from the inside. Well, maybe we gotta wait a minute for that to tack up because it's uh, put a small bead in the item and quickly position and gentle with gentle pressure. Okay. Well, it's getting stickier for sure. Cool. The spray glue is just too gnarly. I don't want it to like get all over everything. Uh, so 
Yeah, you can see it's kind of getting sticky. We'll wait a couple minutes here. And see what it does. It's not quite staying down yet, but it's getting there. So first we'll work this foam to where it'll stay. And then we'll know that it'll for sure hold the cloth because the, the foam kind of has like a little memory where it just wants to keep peeling off. So we just keep working that guy back and forth until that foam is like staying on that lip. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to foam all the way around here. And I might have to do this again. This is the first time I've ever done this or even tried something like this. So I have no idea. But the other foam was so gnarly you can't. Like, how would you know? Not the greatest for making templates of shredded old foam. Alright, so that's hanging on there pretty good. Let's see if we can work this. Ooh, yeah. That's how my sweatshirt gets so dirty. I know I seem perfect, but I do make mistakes. Our phone is not wanting to stay so long. I'm going to pull this fabric back around the top ski. See how that goes. Probably should be cutting reliefs in this and all of these things, but I have no clue. So I'm just going to do this like this. And stretch it tight like it's vinyl wrapping a car. <laughs> Right. So we got the... Did you just imply that you're really good at vinyl wrapping? No. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> but it's a similar weird stretch pull situation. But I am going to have to cut some slits in here because this thing is not feeling the joy. Okay. That made it a little better. I mean, there's probably going to be wrinkles and weirdness because... I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So that's glued, kind of. There's a little bit of wrinkling right here. I'm going to try to work that out before the glue is totally dry. Probably also could have went a little further up on the, the glue. I guess we'll let that rest for a second. see we got a little weirdage back there and it's not even in there but meh, for the most part it looks better than raw styrofoam. All right. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. All right. Fits good. All right. Well I think we're going to let this bed dog kind of dry overnight. It says to give it an hour. It's already getting kind of late. Uh, so we will come back tomorrow and try to get our cheek pads uh, glued into these guys and 
slip that guy back in. Then the last thing we need to do is cover this guy that glue up in the uh, dome piece. See you tomorrow. What's up guys? So we're back again trying to finish up the helmet little interior restoration. Uh, you know, we got the insides kind of done. That's dried. I mean, it's set up for probably a week. We've uh, attempted to wrap these ear pieces, so we'll have to see how that goes. And we do need to wrap this top piece, which is going to be in purple. So I think we're going to do that next. And yeah, so let's get on with it. What we also don't know is how well this glue is going to hold up to like moisture, sweat. No. I'm not sure. But we'll find out. So it's not the greatest, but I'll go down a little more once it's uh, dried up. Okay, let that guy hang out for a minute. Alright, so I guess now we'll try the tricky part of getting that guy back inside here. Then we'll glue that inside there once it's dried. And hopefully be able to glue these ear pieces back on. But it was a tricky, snaky way to get it out, so let's see what happens. So after some choice words were said and a little pulling on the side, a little shoving of it in, it's in there. Uh, it is a little loose because that's how the other one was and I didn't see signs of glue being glued in either. So I'm not really sure, but I want to glue it in in case I had to take it back out again. So that's just going to be how it is. I mean, it's not a super safe helmet anyway. So whether that thing's jumbling around or not, it won't matter unless it starts making noise when you go down the road for some reason. But if you have your head smashed in and this thing tightened on, it shouldn't have a noise. But yeah, so that's in there. Now, I think we're gonna save the inner part for last in case I gotta put my hand down in there. So for now, we'll try to figure out how these went. This is gonna be a real treat. Because these things don't want to do nothing. So this goes like this, like this. What a POS. Well, these were quality made helmets. So I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to glue that back in. That's crazy. 
this goes up like this here. So I see the idea. How that's going to work, I just don't know. It would have been a million times easier if I just drilled these rivets and took it out. And that may be what I have to do. Because that's there's no way in hell I'm going to glue that back in and it stay that way. So we might have to do some rethinking here. I know. Yeah. I don't think that's going to do what we need to do. So what do you think it is that we need to do? Drill these rivets out. Okay. And take the earpiece out, wrap it, glue it, put it back in. Okay. And then we'll need to get new rivets. Yeah. And they're little tiny ones, so I don't know sizing-wise how that goes, but I'm sure I can probably drill them from the inside and, uh, and take them off that way, but that, that's it's not going to be possible to do that because it needs to go back behind this piece. And had we tried to do those first and then shove this back, it definitely would have ripped them off. So the only way is to now take those off. So well, let's find out a way to get them out of there. Alright, so let's try this little side cutter bit. If not, I got some little grinding ones. See how that works. So I got this little grinding bit. I'm gonna to try to grind the heads of the rivets off. I would show you, but it's deep in here, so it's not gonna not gonna work. I'll try to show you once I get it off. snap so we're just going to poke that guy back through and we will get some new roots somewhere to put back in that guy through that guy so we're gonna do the same thing to the other side the outside but of which side I don't know nope yep this side goes like that so essentially we need to wrap this guy around here like that okay cool so I'm gonna start by gluing not all that, but in here. Put in the glue. Okay. That went a little squirrely on me, but. touch these and pull on these quite often or rub them with your face so you really got to be glued on there well. All right, what did we say? This. This. Okay. So that. Yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay. Did you double check in the helmet before you get too far? 
Uh, no. That would be too smart. insert lock nuts and some little tiny screws to use instead of the rivets because the rivets at the fabric store and all those places they weren't the right size and they didn't have their tooling figured out so you gotta like hammer it or something so I figured just putting a nut inside here and running this little Phillips screw through the inside I'll do the trick so that's what we're working on Putting our pieces back on here. Kind of. Maybe. So I got them back inside. I mean, they don't look perfect. It's a little off, but for what it is, it looks okay. And the thing's not so loose anymore because those kind of hold it in. But yeah, I got a little glue on places. Overall, looks pretty good. So now we'll just glue that guy into the inside. that guy got him in there just glued it into the top so we'll see if it sticks I got the sides in I got a little glue on it that I can probably get off of there that ain't perfect but it's not floppy anymore and it looks good I'd say that's a pretty good outcome however I would also say if you are planning to do this to yourself to save a couple bucks you might just want to pay a professional because the reality of it is between all the trips to the store the, the items we bought weren't very expensive the materials probably 14 bucks because you don't even got to buy a whole yard so it's like a half yard each seven bucks a yard so yeah, i mean it was really cheap uh i think the glue was 10 bucks i bought all kinds of different ones this can was 20 something dollars you may have some that you could use whatever but by the time you make all those trips, burn gas across town to these fabric stores, and this one doesn't have it, and maybe you gotta go to that one. Well, I need snaps, I need this. Just pay whoever it is 200 bucks, get your stuff done. I think that's the right way to go, because then you're not worried about the outcome and how it looks. It'll come back to you probably nice, because they know what they're doing, and they have all the materials. So we got away with it. I'm fine with it. it it's just another helmet. I have tons of helmets, but this one's cool. So I just figured, I would try to save it. Now I'm going to clean it up, polish the outside, and I think it's good. Let me... oh, don't. It'll stick to your head. Ah. Ah. We'll okay, try you it. Too. <laughs> See? Ah, we're dialed. Yep. It might come out with my hair, but <laughs> for the most part, it's working. Tell them to like and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. 
like and hit the little alert button so you can be alerted to our upcoming videos as soon as they're released. Later. Why is it when you use scissors you gotta go? Like you, you do that, I do that. Maybe <laughs> nobody else does do that, but I do that. <laughs> it's hard not to do it. Like. I wasn't even getting your mouth. Okay. YouTube, you would have never known. Maybe I'm the only one. If you guys do that, let me know in the comments. Let me know I'm not alone in this. That I, uh, I'm not the only weirdo that has to take a bite when they take a bite. What the fuck? <laughs> with, the, with the scissors. I don't do detailed things like this, so like, maybe that's where it is. Ow. Did it come up? Nope. We're good to go.